Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Escape Pod. Thank you for escaping with us. That's Andrew, and I'm Alex. And as always, with great power comes great merchability, baby. The merch Woo! is here. The merch is out. Andrew is in a lovely baby blue hoodie with the logo on it. Very sharp. You look more handsome than you've ever looked. I, I agree. I think I think it looks nice. We also have these navy blue hats, and then we have a couple of t-shirts with the logo, and then I also wanted to do a commemorative Finn McMissile shirt to commemorate the greatest character of all time. You're the most ridiculous human on the planet. And but. as the captain and head and president of the Cars 2 fan club, I thought it was only right to... Have a shirt to commemorate. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not in that fan club. No, you wouldn't be invited. It's a very rigorous application if process. I, yeah, if I wanted to join, how do I go about doing that? If you were to join, uh, we've got a Discord, but it's invite only. So you got to apply. Okay. I, I can, can I just apply to you? Just be like, hey, let me in. You're denied. Can I try again? Can I like... You're denied. Can I request like you... like? Are you going to appeal it? Yeah, can I appeal it? Your appeal's been denied. Okay. How many appeals do I get? 16. I appeal it. You're denied. I appeal it. You're approved. Yeah, right! Wait, no, wait. <laughs> I hate Finn McMissile. No, I'm just kidding. Um, All right, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, the merch is out. The link will be in our bios, everything Link is like everywhere. That. Um, yeah, so we got the shirts. We've got them in two different colors. We've got the hoodies in two different colors. We've got Finn McMissile. we got the, the hats. We'd love to see y'all, you know, get it, wear yes. it. Please send tag us, us anytime send us pictures. you wear it, love it. We're, we'd love to see you in it. You know, we you guys have been asking for it. And even though this is the first drop and might be the first drop for a little bit, we do have some really cool stuff coming soon shortly after. Yeah. So, so we, uh, we'd love to see y'all in it. And I, I've done YouTube and content creation for almost a decade now. This is the first time that I've ever – this is obviously the first time we're doing it for the podcast. This is the first time I'm ever like – Mm -hmm. really actually doing like a full merch launch. Mm -hmm. So it means a lot to me. I'm excited to see. We've got a lot of people been asking for it. Um, so Here it is. Let's see how this batch, for batch does. Thank you. Boom. All right. High low Buffalo. Yeah, we're going to do a good old high low Buffalo. Yep. Uh, as we always, you know, start off. We, we always start off with high low yeah, Buffalo. You go we're doing it. I'll, I'll start. Um, yeah. Um, my high. Did you make this hoodie the same color as Finn McMissile? Is that why you wanted this color? No. I was about to flip this table. I just, I'm looking at your shirt and it matches me way too much. It I want to take the hoodie matches off. Matches you perfectly. You're a freaking terrible person. If it makes you feel any better, I was thinking more of an aqua for what you're wearing. But the baby blue ended up getting voted the final. So it just is coincidence. Have you seen my phone wallpaper? the color of your hoodie <laughs> <laughs> all right what's so your high my high uh actually very serious topic serious um did i do that i think you threw an h in there when you shouldn't have okay the wga yeah have reached a deal with the amptp pp does it end in pp actually no okay <laughs> so i've now the strikes are not over SGA is still uh, like... Yeah, SAG, SAG. You said SGA. <laughs> student SGA is, plays student for the government. Oklahoma City Sun Thunder. <laughs> student Government Association. Okay, yeah. yes. Um, uh, so SAG is still on strike, so we are still standing in solidarity with the actors, but the writers have gotten paid. I wanted to talk about the specifics for this deal because it's, it's awesome. I'm all ears. Um, uh, there now has to be a minimum number of writers on every show giving obviously a lot more writers a lot more jobs. Yeah. Um, writers, uh, uh, um, they are now paid the same for streaming that they are for TV. Okay, good. Which is great. Um, uh, it's better pay overall, plus like pension and health for writers. Um, there are major, major, major protections against AI. Yep. Right? So AI can't write or edit scripts or anything like that. And then this is one of the coolest things is they've got success based residuals. So if a show is doing really, really well, they get paid more. They get paid more. That's awesome. So Which just makes sense. Super happy for the writers. They were on strike for 148 days. Wow. And, you know, now that strike is over. They have gotten paid. They got two this is gonna cost the studios two hundred and thirty three million dollars. Awesome. Those studios were saying we won't give you fifty. And they get that bread. Writers. Literally 
quadrupled that. So super happy for the writers. And now it's time to get the actors paid so that everybody can just go back to normal and we can get back to content. And that's my low. I'm furious. Very rarely do we talk about football on this podcast in a serious way. And if we do talk about football on this podcast, it never has to do actually with what we're talking about on the podcast. But here I am. The strikes have ruined Monday Night Football. Please explain. Monday Night Football, there are three primetime games. I know I know this. A week. Yeah, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday Monday. Night Football, Sunday Night Football, and Monday Night Football. Where that's the only game. And I love it. I love a good primetime game. But most football fans will know, and that they noticed, that for the last two weeks or three weeks, there have been two Monday Night Football games. Going on at the same time. One starting at 7.15, the other starting at 8.15. Why is this? Because the studios, because of the strike, do not have anything to put for that Monday night section. So they just bought an NFL game. And now I'm missing an NFL game every Dude, Monday. I'm, I'm so, like, how do you, like... It's infuriating. Because there's no red zone option for Monday Night Football. I can't watch both of them at the same time. So, Like, I, like are you okay? Like, I went to the week three Cincinnati Bengals-Los Angeles Rams game on Monday night. Mm-hmm. It was happening at the same time as the Tampa Bay-Philadelphia game that I had money on. That's so I had money on this game and I couldn't be watching it. Not acceptable. And it's the strike's fault. Not acceptable. I, I mean, I'm not blaming the strike. It's the studio's fault. Sounds like you're blaming the strike. It's the studio's fault. Pay them so that we can get Monday Night Football back. I'm furious. So you're you don't you don't support the strikes. I support the strikes, and I also stop Asian hate. Let me ask you this. Yeah. <clears throat> if it meant that Monday Night Football went back to normal, would you be okay with the studios <laughs> screwing all the actors? No. And the actors not getting what they want? No. No. I think off camera you're gonna be like absolutely. No. <laughs> no. Do not say that. All right. Um, what's your buffalo? Uh, my buffalo is actually kind of funny. Um. So my brother is a world-class golfer. Luigi. Mario. Sorry. Um uh he he will he 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 will the idea if nothing changes, if nothing changes from the current plan, he will be going pro after this year. When he is like in what's the biggest uh, golf the PGA thing? tour. The PGA. If he gets in the PGA tour, can he wear this hoodie? The hoodie you're currently wearing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why couldn't he wear the hoodie beforehand? I'm saying to like, as like, like, because he'll be on TV. He'll be wearing our oh, stuff. Oh, well, that's funny. That's kind of what my Buffalo is about. Oh, okay. So golf, it's a very specific. You have to dress a yeah. certain way, right? It's a collared shirt, maybe a quarter zip. And so I was talking to my little brother about going golfing with him. I'm not a very good golfer, but he's obviously a brilliant golfer. But I've always had fun going golfing with me and all my other friends that are bad at golf and Mario. Because Mario kills us, and we're all competing for second place. But the gap between first place and second place is hilarious. Anyway, the other day he said, I really want to go golfing with you and Andrew. No. And I thought to myself, that is the funniest visual of all time. But then he brought up, what would Andrew wear? You can't wear the Spider-Man hoodie on a golf course. So I don't have any more options. I took the time to get you a Spider-Man quarter zip to go golfing with us. Dude, that's sick. <laughs> what? So you could wear that at church or on a golf course. Bro, what? A Spider-Man quarter zip. That's hot. So there you go. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. I thought that that would be a fun gift. Oh, it's a great gift. Yeah. So there you go. That's my buffalo. Thank you. Your turn. I have a gift for you. Oh. Yeah. I'll save it though. Uh, my high for this week. Uh huh. Saw ten, baby. Yes. I have not seen it yet. It is still my high for two reasons. Number one, it is a new Saw movie. We haven't gotten one of those in a few years, and I love Saw. Mm-hmm. Number two, I have heard nothing but good things. It is debuted at an 82% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's very high for a horror movie. It is the highest rated Saw movie of all time. And I have talked to multiple people who have seen it and they said, thumbs up. Congratulations. I am, I'm seeing it tomorrow morning. This is like your No Way Home. <laughs> no, No Way Home was my No Way Home. Uh, but no, I'm very excited. Um, John Kramer, baby. Yeah. He is my literal father. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. I hope it's excellent. Uh, so that's my high. I'm very excited. Mm-hmm. My low is... 
we're just like behind. We're not behind. I'm behind. But you were out of town for a week and a half. I was gone for a few days. I got back. My room's a mess. I've got like 5,000 things to do. This episode is coming out in a few days, mm-hmm. like from when we're filming this. And we're still a little bit ahead, but not. We got the merch coming out. There's a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about it all. Just got a lot going on. A lot going on. Uh, and then my Buffalo is, um, I have a couple options, but I'm going to go with just um, because we just watched it, uh, the Patreon episode that came out three days ago. Um, so we're filming this on the day that it's releasing. It's going to release in a couple hours. Mm-hmm. But this is coming out on Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Patreon episode is probably the funniest thing we've ever filmed. Absolutely. I made a trailer for it that was like two or three minutes, and you were laughing out loud. That will be posted on the Discord. That will be posted on TikTok. I'm very, very proud of the trailer. And somehow the episode gets even crazier in the context of the episode. Right. <laughs> so if you don't have the Patreon, make sure you get the you, Patreon. You get, an, you get an extra episode every week. But the episodes just get progressively more and more unhinged. Yeah. The next episode we're due, we're going to be naked or something. This, this is the most unhinged thing we've ever done. While, Absolutely. While editing it, I was like, because like, I was really tired and out of it. Mm-hmm. And then we also had two people in the room with us just mm-hmm. shouting and shoving stuff in our mouths and... Time. It was intense. It was very intense. Absolutely. Uh, but your gift. Yeah. What's your favorite MCU TV show? Loki. <gasps> oh, yeah. What do we got? What do we got? What do we show got? It? I didn't look. I didn't see everything. Okay, we got a little TVA file. Oh, that's sick. With the, you know, one of those Let me see. files. Very excited. Apprehended. Oh. Sex fluid. You already know. Oh my gosh. Hat guy, it's baby. a TVA hat. Oh, yeah. Oh, with Miss Minutes on the my back. Gal. Excellent. So we got a TVA hat. We've got, oh, a little Ooh. hourglass. We can use this as a, like a trivia challenge on we a future could. episode. Oh, that's kind of sick. I didn't know I was getting sent all this. We got one of these. Congratulations. We're an analyst. Okay, let me see. Oh, what is this? This is the steel book for the first season. Yeah. That's pretty sick. So that's the main thing in this is they sent me um, just the complete first season on uh, steel book. It looks very cool. Um, there's some behind the scenes extra stuff in here, I think. Um, and then obviously season two comes out very, very soon. So I think that's why they're so pushing So there's this. a t-shirt here that's I think going to make me cry. Give me a second. So it's a TVA t-shirt. Mm-hmm. And... As we can tell, this size is an extra large. Did you specifically request that? Maybe. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> I love you. Because usually these boxes are like adult smalls. Yeah. Or mediums. Because medium that's your size. We've got a... Sorry. That's mine. Absolutely. <laughs> what? what? What's the purpose of this analog keyboard? And Do some ASMR for you. Here's the back, the the the, the I mean the box. They for sent it. me a whole freaking. It's a back, RGB backlit mechanical gaming keyboard. Finn Mick missile sucks balls. Well, wow, that's sick. Oh yeah, screw my other keyboard. Yeah, that one's pretty. I fucking got a cool. low key keyboard. That Heck one's yeah, really dude. Cool. That one's really cool. But uh, a lot of great stuff. So shout out Marvel. Yeah, thank you we for sending us. We are very excited for Loki season two. The Blu Ray is out on nine slash twenty six. Is that today, or is today the twenty eighth? What's today? Today's the 29th. I'm stupid on all accounts. That's fine. Welcome to the TVA, and excited right, for season exciting. two. Cool. There you go. Well, I'm very excited for season two. How excited are you for season two? I would take your excitement and cut it in half. That's fine. Yeah. Um. Speaking of cutting excitement in half, I just went to a convention in Cincinnati because there just happened to be a convention going on while I was in town. How convenient was that? It was Cincinnati Comic Expo. It was really awesome. Met a lot of cool people. Thank you to everybody that came up and said hi. Support the podcast. But also, I had told you this, but I was in Disneyland earlier this week. Yeah. And recognized, talking to people or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one guy, our patron, came up, recognized me. Yep. hung out with him for like 30 minutes. Bought his whole family, like food. Everything was great. Very nice but of you. But my favorite one of the day was I was just walking through Disneyland. And a guy just walking by went, yo, escape pod. And yeah. Then just, and then just kept walking. That's <laughs> so great. I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's great. I have a story I'll probably talk about on the Patreon about a fan interaction. Not a fan interaction, honestly. Uh-oh. Um, Oh, did I not tell you about At that? At Comic-Con? Yes. Or the, the com? Oh, my gosh. 
I called. Oh, yeah. yes. And he was like, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so that was crazy. <laughs> but anyway, while I was there, there was a booth that had like every Pokemon plush ever. Wow. So I was like, that's awesome. So I got an Ivysaur. Nice. Nobody else got an Ivysaur. He's the middle one, right? Everybody's got Venusaur. Everybody's got, got Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. Ivysaur. So I got him. He's cute. Obviously, I had to get my twin. <laughs> Alolan Executor. Alolan Executor. And then as many of you know that follow me on Instagram, my Instagram profile for years has been Shiny Charizard. So I got wow. a Shiny Charizard, which is awesome. These are mad cute. But I wanted to take the time to address something with the camera and with you. Okay. According we are, we are to both Game here. Freak, according to Pokemon, according to the people in charge of Pokemon, this is a dragon. This is not a dragon. Okay. So, are they st stupid? What is Charizard? He's fire flying, and this is a, tree. a dragon. That's a tree. Exactly. That is a tree. I think he's grass dragon. He might be psychic dragon, He has dragon, leaves though. and coconuts. Yep. And he's a dragon. Are those his balls? But this is not a dragon, according to Pokemon. But what would you say he is? A firefly? He's fi like the types. You get two types as a Pokemon. This is fire flying, and this is dragon grass. <laughs> How ridiculous is that, that this is not a dragon? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Pokemon be weird. It's cool because you can move his neck. And it stays that way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do that with you. Just... So, so just... <laughs> I like him. He's my new buddy. Yeah, gonna he's, he's going to be on the set for sure. Put him on the set somewhere. So it's a tax write-off. Bam, 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 bam. All right, let's move on. What are we doing? We're doing a new segment. We're going from really happy. Yeah, to real sad. Alolan Executors and Loki and to um, the worst of the worst. Yes. So this is a new segment. I don't know what we're going to call it yet. You guys in the comments, let us know what we should call it. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, I've got to entertain everybody for two seconds. So let us know in the comments what um, what we have to uh, what we should call this segment. But essentially, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading mean comments of ours um, that people have left on TikTok. And so I will be reading three mean comments about Andrew, and he will be guessing what videos they are from. So if somebody was to say, and I will be doing the same. So if somebody was to say. Hat guy sucks. How does he not like Shang-Chi? I would guess, oh, that's from the clip where it's, you know, Shang-Chi's a bad movie. Ah, ha, 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 that, that clip. So, um, so that's what we're going to be doing uh, for this. And we're doing three. And we're going to make sure that we're doing three different uh, videos. So that it doesn't just get redundant. Or else, you know, some of the comments would just be all from the same video. So uh, shall I go first or shall you? You can go first. Okay. So this is a comment about you. And you're going to guess what clip it's from. Oh, right, right, okay. Disney Plus's target audience is the nerd in the pajamas. Okay, so this is, has to be something on Disney Plus. Um, what's something I liked on Disney Plus that a lot of people would have given me hate for? Uh, I guess She-Hulk could be up there. Uh, I'm going to go a, a, a video of us talking about Secret Invasion. Avengers followed by The Greatest Showman. <laughs> <laughs> One of our most famous clips. Yes, yeah. So shall you go or shall I finish up? I can go again. Okay. Okay. Uh, or I can go. Um, this is just two words. Okay. And a period. Okay. It's from someone we know. Okay. Hard watch. Luke... On the 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 Anakin video, the, yes. yeah, yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, here's here's what uh, this is Spider Man hoodie guy's worst take. This video made me want to puke. Puke is your keyword. I'm gonna help you here. Puke. We were talking about vomit. Wait, what? what? It's a take. I'm just going to say Thor Ragnarok. Arby's. Oh. Oh. Nah, I'm not taking that. I don't accept that. Arby's is great. Mm -hmm. I'll stand by it. All right, your turn. 
Sometimes thoughts should just stay thoughts. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> oh, that's so me. Oh, that's good. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to guess. Oh, oh, Gal Gadot. Uh, this was actually on the, uh, the Ahsoka Anakin one again. We're supposed to do like three different ones that are three different. It's, it's the Anakin Ahsoka. It's the same video. It's the same video. Okay. All right. Well, I hope, are those the last two? I got one more. Okay, great. No, no. I mean like, are those the last two from that video? Yeah. Okay. So then uh, this is, this is a two parter that this is, this is my favorite one of today. Somebody commented, what's the nerd that dresses like Spider-Man's name? And I responded, Andrew. And they responded, Andrew sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> You're going to lose it when you hear the video that this is from. Okay. Um, it makes it ten times funnier. This is this is me talking about like my, me being single or something. It's the video where you're crying about Spider Verse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! It's a very emotional video where yeah. Andrew spends the whole video going, "I'm so grateful for these <laughs> opportunities. I love you guys so much." And this guy goes, "Andrew sucks." That's awesome. Incredible. That's amazing. It's my favorite comment. <clears throat> One of the guys that I talked to at Disneyland brought up that video. It was like, me too. Oh, that's great. It was really nice. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Waiting for this guy to do the goofy laugh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, I'm going to do, I guess, I, I, don't, I don't know because that's so vague. So I'm just going to go with an appearance one. I'm going to go the beard video. Yeah. Uh, good guess. You're okay. close. You're yeah. close. This was the Anakin Ahsoka Hayden video. <laughs> same, same. All three of them. All three of them. Worth the same video. Yeah. I, the whole point of this was we were going to do different videos. Well, you got all three wrong. No, you got the first one right. Yeah. You're supposed to guess. Yeah. You no. got plenty on this video. You kind of. Yeah, I, I guess I should. I just assumed that that was a I have like one rules. or two more. Okay. Are they all from They're that video? They're same video. Okay. This guy is gross. Okay. F this guy. Yeah. Uh, not on gang for real, for real. Oh, was that fun? Yeah. That's heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, this is clown behavior. Yeah. Um, everyone is entitled to their opinion, their stupid effing opinion. Okay. Yeah. I would be embarrassed to have made such a public awful take. Yeah. Um, okay. What the actual F bro spit F this grape is sour. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, who are you again? Tro wow. Trolling for views. Could you do a better job? No. Please shut your mouth. Uh -huh. Where is the dislike button? Uh -huh. Worst take ever. Yeah. TikTok seriously needs to adopt a dislike button. Um, <laughs> you've had goofy takes since day one. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Well, you nah, go. reconsider, bro. The fish islands isn't doing this guy any favors. Uh, you look like a human and mutant mayhem. Um, your voice isn't meant for public. Uh, never speak again. You and your malnourished friend have the worst takes I've ever heard. Um, how are you going to talk about someone's delivery? Bro actually is just slow. Bro needs some, and then they just put an emoji of a tooth and a toothbrush. Um, <laughs> This mf -er looks like a whitewashed Adam Driver. How about you shut up, you dirty communist? Bro has literally never had a good take. This content creator is a joke and not a funny one. Um, Reevaluate that statement, sir. At the beginning of this video, you said some people asked for your opinion. Someone said, can we have your opinion be unasked? <laughs> um, have a shower and go outside for once. You were definitely that annoying leash kid growing up. Um, I'm going to skip a bunch of these. Um, you can't skip them. You've said all these already. <laughs> um, I'd ask him what's worst, Hayden's acting or his ability to grow a beard. We all know the real answer, Patches. Um, did you get the attention you wanted? Just stop. Um, 
Take this opinion with a grain of salt, my friends. This is coming from a Rams fan. He prefers mediocrity in his entertainment. We won the Super Bowl two years ago. <laughs> um, if I'm going to get clicks by being different was a person. Uh, <laughs> and um, a Rams fan having this opinion, yeah, makes sense. Well, I, I really... <laughs> wow. That was a lot. That was a lot more than I expected. I skipped some, too. Um, that was fun. That was funny. Um, well, for those of you that hate me for that opinion, I, I really have no problem with people that hate me for that opinion. The people that think I'm wrong are obviously idiots. You know, Hayden Christensen did get bullied out of acting because he sucks so much in the prequels. Yeah, a lot of people were angry at you. Cause... Everybody that's, like, mad at me that's like, Oh, like you're you're doing what they did in the early 2000s be better. I have no problem with you saying that. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Clearly. But like I have no problem with you saying that. But the people that are like he's so good, you're wrong. What do you think about the people who are like he he studied uh, James Earl Jones, Jones delivery Morris, and he that's he... fucking stupid. <laughs> that he... is so stupid. Also, somebody obviously now we get tagged in all these videos that are like look at how good Hayden Christensen is. Half of them, he's terrible. There was a video that somebody tagged us in that was like, how are you going to say that this was terrible acting? And he's talking to Dave Filoni behind the scenes of filming Ahsoka where he's like, yeah, when I say, I've heard that before. It's like a callback. That's really cool. Callback to Return of the Jedi. And then they show the clip and him saying, I've heard that before is so much worse than when he's having the regular conversation with Dave Filoni. Stupid. He's a bad actor. But yeah. Now, do I deserve to be deplatformed? Yeah, the people that were like... You... Certainly not. No, 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 no. <laughs> Certainly not. Consider, you know, don't throw stones when you live in a glass house, Bubba. Yeah. That was yeah. Crazy. But that was fun. Maybe that's a new segment and we'll do more in depth. We'll do more comments because yeah. y'all are funny as I like. I like that I got thrown in one of those and I was the malnourished friend. That's good. <laughs> I still can't get over... What's his name? Andrew, Andrew sucks. Andrew sucks. That was great. <laughs> On such a positive video. Like, that is the greatest thing I've ever seen in like my he life. Like, needed, he needed to just get more, like, info on me so he could yeah. let me know what he thought. No, yeah, it was yeah. great. It was great. It was great. So, uh, we're wrapping it up with uh, Phase 4. Yep. We've got Phase 4. Um, so, uh, we just starting from the top? Yeah, let's do it. So, we're going to rank all these movies, talk about them, debate them. This is a movie we've never... A lot of these movies we've never talked about on the podcast. So, you ready? Mm -hmm. Here is our review for Black Widow. It came out in 2020. Three, two, one. Six out of ten. Six out of ten. It's just fine. It's fine. It's fine. I think... I think... I I have not seen this level of rage a lot, but I saw this level of rage when people were discussing Taskmaster. I don't have as big of a problem with it. Yep. Because contrary to popular belief, I am not a comics Nazi. You just pick and choose when you want to be. Exactly. Which is frustrating. And Taskmaster isn't a character that means much to me. So, yes, it's a terrible representation of the character. Yes. I don't care. Yes, terrible. But the weird thing is I had two friends that were like, if they don't do Taskmaster right, I'm going to be real upset. I love him in the comics. And they came out of the movie. They were like, and I was like, shouldn't you be like super pissed off? It was, it was really weird. That's weird. I would love the opportunity to talk to them. Yeah. but Because uh, they're wrong. What did you think about freaking Black Widow just smashing her face into a table to break her nose? That Very was, cool. That was crazy. Yeah, that's my favorite scene in that movie. Probably. I just like the fact that they went back and explored Drakov's daughter and all the yeah. stuff that Loki mentioned in yeah. the Avengers. I think that's cool. And and they were in Budapest for a minute and whatever. Yeah, I think there's a lot of cool stuff in that movie, actually. Yeah. And I think Florence Pugh... What did you think about some of the CGI? Bad, obviously. But, yeah. you know, that happens all the time. Also, people love Yelena. And I love David Harbour. David Harbour's funny in it. Yeah. Um Mom is so bad. The mom? Yeah, Renee Zellweger. I don't... I, I guess I was too focused on Natasha. She, she's the baddest one in the movie. Why do you say stuff like that? Scarlett Johansson's in the movie, brother. So is Florence Pugh, and Renee wins. I need to see how ridiculous you're being. So, 
Yeah, she's oh, oh my gosh, getting me. And I, you know, I've talked to some friends, and my friends agree with me that she's the baddest in that movie. Anyway, um, are these the same friends that agreed with you that that Chung Chi's bad? bad? Yes, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, so uh, another thing that I want to talk about about this movie, um, uh, I think that Florence Pugh is great as Yelena, and I think she's spectacular in Hawkeye. Nah, she's okay in uh, Black Widow. She's not nearly as good as she is in Hawkeye. What are you, you looking her up? Yep. What do you Rachel. think? Rachel. Rachel Zellweger. Is that what it is? Rachel Weiss. Weiss. I'm a fucking idiot. Who's Renee Zellweger? Don't ask me. I'm an idiot. Sorry. She was Ra- in The Mummy? Yeah, she's the female lead of The Mummy. Okay, I think you're stupid. Yeah, Renee is so bad. She's pretty. Let me tell you Renee Zellweger. Oh, no. No, no. I'm not rocking Renee. Renee won the Oscar a couple years ago for Judy. Judy? Yeah, she played Judy Dench. No. Not Judy Dench. You gotta, you gotta stop talking. I'm having a slow morning. I haven't had <laughs> breakfast. I'm just having a tough time. We're done. We're moving That was on. like a speed run of how many things you could get wrong. In no, like a and I'm seconds. usually the name guy. Yeah, yeah. But I'm off. All right, next one, shang Chi. We've done this to death. I wonder how high you're on this movie. Yeah, bring Is it, it on. Could be an go. eight or a nine. Come on, what? Guess. I hope eight. Don't tell me you give this movie a just, nine. Just freaking count it. Shang Chi. Three, two, one. Nine. Oh fuck you! It's right here. See, that's a nine. Five out of ten. That's gross. You're gross. This movie is patches. Worse. This movie is bad. This movie's great. If you take Aquafina out of it, it's probably a six or seven. But that finale is just pitiful. The best. I came out of the movie hyped beyond belief. I was like, Marvel's back, baby. Shang-Chi's great. Shall we move on? Yeah. I have no interest. I have no interest. We've, we've, we've done it plenty. We've done the big we've CGI battle debate a billion times. What do you think about Maurice? Fun. In terms of creatures in the MCU, where does he rank? Low. Who's above him? Every other creature. Rocket Raccoon and Groot are both clearly better. Yeah. I can't think. The Goose. Yeah, I, Goose is better. I don't think Goose is better. Goose is way better. He scratches freaking Nick Fury's eye. But there's the really funny joke in the Marvels trailer. Oh, so you're you're using one joke in a future movie to make him? And it's a, badass. Maurice like Maurice helps him through that forest. Yeah. And doesn't have a face. He doesn't have a face, though. It's weird. No, it's kind of weird, but it's kind of cool. He can, like, communicate with no face. I like Trevor. Yeah, but Trevor and Maurice are a package deal. Yeah, I guess so. Shall we move on to Eternals? Yeah, just put some respect on Maurice's name. Eternals. Three, two, one. Six, Six. out of ten. Nice. You're two for two here. Out, you're two out of three. There you go. Are you okay? No. I'm really falling apart here mentally. But... <laughs> You know what movie doesn't fall apart mentally or physically? Eternals. Eternals is pretty good all the way through. Yeah. It's too long. People saying that it's terrible. You're wrong. You're wrong. I don't understand the Rotten Tomato score. What is it? It's 42%. It's That's the crazy. lowest rated Marvel project ever. That's crazy. It's way better than some of the garbage in the MCU. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I like movies that give us something different. And, it's really different. And Eternals was, was was something that we haven't seen in the in the MCU. And it's really nice. And we were just talking about the bad CGI in Black Widow. And obviously you like the CGI in Shang-Chi, but I have no idea what the fuck's going on in that final battle. I think that CGI is terrible. Um, CGI in Eternals all the way through is excellent. The speedster. Amazing. That's how you do it. <laughs> also, Icarus. That's the best Superman we've ever seen. Not act- acting as Superman, but like the flying, how effortless it is, the laser eyes, it looks great. Yeah, it looks really, really cool. And I like their powers, how it like looks like, how it looks with the gold and it's very symmetrical and this and that. I thought it was really cool all the way through. Kumal Nanjiani is hilarious in that movie. I don't love that he's just not in the final battle, but, and I love the ending. And it's two of my top five favorite end credit scenes in any oh, because of superhero movie. I love Harry Styles. You're a One as, Directioner. I'm no, but I just love I love 
uh, I love Star Fox in the comics. He's one of my favorite characters in the comics. And I've always said I wanted Zac Efron to play that character. So to get a heartthrob like Harry Styles is just perfect. You, I love who's it. hotter? Harry Styles or Zac Efron? Prime Zac Efron, I think, is undefeated. I don't... But, Gosling, but now... Gosling has a chance, but Prime Zac Efron's beating everybody. Now, I'm probably giving it to Harry Styles because Zac Efron had that surgery. Yeah. His face is all puffy. Yeah. He broke his jaw, dude. Yeah, but we can't, like... It's like talking about Peyton Manning at the end. You know, Peyton Manning's still the second best quarterback of all time. Yeah. You gotta take their whole track record, not just... And prime Zac Efron is unbelievable. When's prime Zac Efron? A little bit after High School Musical, all the way to, like, four years ago. So, in Greatest Showman... Yeah, he's hot as fucking Greatest Showman. He's freaking hot. Dude, he's so hot in Baywatch I'm gonna with le- the blonde hair. I'm going to let you know right now. Yeah. He's hot with the beard and the white hair. He's so hot. I watched Greatest Showman a lot. Yeah. And then there was a time where I took a break and then I came back and there's a, I'm a, I'm extremely straight. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that one more time. Religiously. I'm very straight. Uh, yeah. But there's a moment in that movie at the very end, when Hugh Jackman's like literally passing that hat to him, and he's like, "It's your turn. Go, go to the thing." And then there's like a swell in the music, and he comes out and like slides on his knees, and then hits the note, and like I, I paused the movie. I was like, "Hold," and I ran it back. It's awesome. I was like, "That's hot." This is the great, and he like, Ba-da-da-da! and then like everyone's doing it with him. It, he hits it, and it's it's very nice. Excellent. I, I want to go watch that scene now. I'm glad that. Look, Zach Efron has aroused every straight man in on earth. So I'm glad that that's the arousal point for you. <laughs> that's that's secretly ar- why it's my favorite movie. Oh, because yeah. it just gets you going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Prime Gosling. Gosling right now is killing it. So they're up there. But Zach Efron's my guy. We go into the creme de la creme. Yeah. Spider-Man No Way Home. Let's go. Here's our review for Spider-Man No Way Home. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Nine point five. Nine out of ten. Yeah. Where does this rank in the MCU for you? It's top five. This is top three for me. It's hard for me to say it wouldn't be like it's Avengers, Winter Soldier, and then I'm like, Bro. Yeah, it's Infinity War, Civil War, No Way Home for me. Yeah, I'm definitely putting above Civil War. It's just whether it's above Infinity War or not. But it's it's t- it's probably three or four, and then yeah. So we could talk about how good this movie is all day. Yeah. But I feel like everybody's talked about how yeah. good this movie is all day. Shall we talk about the people that have switched up on it? Sure. That don't think it's a good movie. Do you think they're just trying to be different? <laughs> I don't know. Some of them. I don't. As somebody that gets called out for trying to be different a lot, when I'm literally never trying to be different. These are all my 100% true opinions. Um, I have trouble imagining that people would do that because I see the hate I get. (laughs) We just read it out loud. And I think to myself, like, why would you want to do that for nothing? For something you don't even believe in. Like, I'm happy to do that for something like Shang-Chi because I think it's crazy to me that people think it's a good movie. Like, I don't know why you would do that. Like, if you love No Way Home and you actually think it's a good movie, I don't know why you would do that. Yeah. So, speaking of, like, all the good things about it, everyone loves it. Are there any, like, what are what do you think are the top problems with it, if there are any? I, I think it's a gray movie. A gray? It, it's gray. It, it It's like one of, it's, that movie should be a top five most colorful movies in the MCU. And it's gray all the time. And it has always bothered me. Now, the MCU overall is gray. Civil War is very gray. But, like, Civil War, I'm okay with Civil War being gray. Spider-Man No Way Home should be more color. But it's like you're at the bronze Statue of Liberty. It's like everything could be color and pop. And Spider-Man comics are so colorful. The Raimi movies are so colorful. The Tasm 2 movies... uh, Tasm 2... the, The Tasm movies are not colorful. But the Tasm 2 suit is the most colorful suit we've ever gotten. And I just feel like every shot is orange or gray so i don't love the way it's shot and i don't have many other problems with it and i hate that people are like oh if you take nostalgia out that movie it's not a very good movie wrong you're wrong 
It's You're a good wrong. Movie. It's a great. It's by far the best live action Spider-Man. If movie. you didn't have Toby and Andrew in that movie and it just followed Tom dealing with the it's same thing, still it's still a great still a movie. movie. It's still a great movie. Yes. Problems, I have. Yes. Um. So I there's there's once upon a time where I looked at this movie and I compared it to all other Spider-Man movies and I made a list of things that Spider-Man movies all should have mm-hmm. and I wanted to put No Way Home in that rubric and see if it checked all the boxes. Mm-hmm. And to me, um, Spider-Man comedy and quipping is one of them. He, there's comedy in this movie, but is Spider-Man ever funny in that movie? Andrew is. When? Oh, Max! I, I'm not, I haven't seen you in so long! And- there is only one or two lines, and they're all Andrew. The other, I I went through the whole movie. The- Andrew is Spider Manning circles around the other two, like the people that have like been arguing, and a lot of people say the Tasm supporters came, like like they didn't exist before No Way Home. I disagree with that. I think you were a Tasm supporter pre No Way Home. Um, so I disagree with the notion that people only like Tasm because of No Way Home, even though I think Tasm's bad and I don't think you should like it. It's fine. I think they existed before. Dude, the best day of Tasm supporters' lives was the day No Way Home came out because Andrew is so much better than the other two in that movie. It's yep. wild. The other one is there's like one moment where he's fighting the lizard and he's like, can you just yeah, just yeah. stay right there? Yeah. Like, that was good. So I wish there was a little bit more of that from maybe the other two or yeah. Tom earlier in the movie or yeah. whatever. So that's one thing. Um, another thing is, um, I think people, like, in No Way Home, people might get mad at me for this, but, like, it kind of is Peter's fault. Like, like the whole movie is, Absolutely is. is his fault. Absolutely is. Like, but I don't see that as a problem with the it's movie. It's not necessarily a problem, but the first time I watched it, when he took the thing from Doctor Strange, I was like, don't do that. What are you doing, yeah, man? Yeah, and I don't I don't want to, like, watch a movie and the main character be stupid. And, like, I feel sorry for him. He goes through a lot of terrible crap for the rest of the movie. It's entirely his fault. But at the same time, it's like, you kind of ask for it, brother. Absolutely. Like... Absolutely. A lot of people have an issue with Doctor Strange's poor decision-making in this movie. I don't. I don't. I really don't have any issues with this movie. And the villains it's to- if, if, are and, excellent. And this is another thing. Like, Tom's Spider-Man can be annoying sometimes. And a lot of people have that problem with Homecoming. Mr. Stark, Mr. Stark, just this... I mean, he's a kid, so it makes a little bit more sense. But, like, if he literally just shut up while Doctor Strange was breaking the multiverse for him, like, yeah. your aunt would still be alive, right? Yeah. So, um, that's not necessarily a problem, but it is something that kind of bothered me the first couple times I watched it. I just wanted Peter to just, like, not be stupid. Um, another problem, I think I have like, oh, I, I, I've talked about this before. I don't like the fact that he put that thing back in his pocket and didn't try to talk to MJ. No, you're wrong. I'm not wrong. You're wrong. No. You're the only person that has that opinion. That's not true. That is not true. I, and you don't want, you don't want them to bring back Zendaya and all that. I do. If they bring back Zendaya, I, that, that'll be such a bad decision. It's not a bad decision. Peter promised her this thing that he would do. And he didn't do it. He broke his promise. That's bad. She loved him. And it's her decision to make. It's her decision to make. And not then his. And he walks into that coffee shop and she's got the cut And she's got a eye. boo-boo. She's got a boo-boo. Yeah. Oh, no. He's, she almost fucking died. And if Andrew wasn't there, she would have died. It's The her. same way Gwen died. He promised to come find her and explain. He promised her. Number one. Number two. That is her decision to make. I'm not. She's got. She. 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 She can do. She. She. She has a lot of problems because she wants to date Spider Man. She's more in danger. She can't get into college because she's friends with Spider Man and she's got a boo boo. Okay, that's loving someone, and obviously it's a it's a different scale with Spider Man. But every relationship you has comes with sacrifice, and if she wants to make that sacrifice and take that risk, that is her decision. And if Peter doesn't want to do that or break up with her later, that's fine. But promising her and making that decision for her while, because Dr. Strange did a spell that is manipulative and bad. No. You couldn't be more wrong. No. I can't wait for you to get flamed. Wrong. Are we moving on? If I get brainwashed and before I get brainwashed, I say, you need to come do this for me. And you say, I'll do it. And you don't do it. You're a bad person. Period. 
Not if what I'm telling you to do is going to endanger your life. Guess what? My decision to make. My life. You don't get to make a bad decision and take a box from a wizard and then F up everyone's life and then the ramifications of that being fixed is me getting brainwashed and you not fixing that? No, frick you. Frick you. Yeah, her life might be better because she can get into college now, but it also might not be as good because she lost the love of her life. Frick you. Next. Mom. Yep. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, a.k.a. the most disappointing movie in the MCU. Three, two, one. Six. Five out of ten. I'm happy. I'm glad you gave it a six. That's pretty low for you. Yes. You gave Quantumania a seven. You think Quantumania is better than Mom? Again, I think I've bumped Quantumania to a six since then. Okay. Um, the reason I like this is the same reason, or I don't dislike this as much as everyone else, is the same reason I don't like dislike Eternals as much as everyone else. It did give us something slightly different. It is different. It's just bad. Right. Parts of it are bad. but There's some good stuff in this movie. I will not, but we have a friend. We have a friend yeah. who I think says it best. Okay. The screenwriter Michael Waldron and Sam Raimi made two completely different movies. Okay. And I really feel like after WandaVision, which is one of my favorite shows, they really jumped the shark. With her. With her. Yes, but I was fine with it because it gave us something different. So here's the good. Here's the good. It's more of a horror movie. Not really. Not really. But Not really. It's but, fun. But Wanda being a villain was interesting and different. That's good. Yeah. Um, I you don't like the Illuminati. I like the Illuminati. That whole fight. I. That's my favorite scene in that movie. What the, What are you getting? At? Oh, I thought you thought it was stupid. No, I love that. But I love that movie. I love that scene for a very different reason that other people like that scene. And I love that mo that scene for the very reason that everybody hates on it. Everybody hates on that scene in the Illuminati. Oh yeah, because they're not because they're like idiots or whatever, whatever. And it's like, how is he the smartest man in the universe? And he gives away that. the thing. I hate that. He's not the smartest man in the universe. These guys have the most hubris of all time because. They see all the other universes and they're like, oh, look at us. We can name your universe. We're so much better than you. So, of course, they think their smartest guy is the smartest guy. He's a fucking idiot. They're all idiots. I love that they die. But you like it for a different reason. Why do you like it then? Because it just shows how OP Wanda is. And we actually get to, like, the cameos are cool and John Krasinski is cool. And it's just cool to see Wanda just wipe out the Illuminati. I hate that people complain about the... He could wipe you out with one word from his mouth or whatever. Like Wanda wouldn't have been able to take him down e either way. I, that doesn't think I don't think that makes him stupid. I don't think the, the the writers of the movie put that in there to show that he's being stupid. Like I also think she could block it. Yeah, no, like, like it, I, I, people like latch onto that line, being like, "Oh, Marvel messed up." No, they didn't. I think that's stupid. I like the scene. Um, those are my two probably favorite things is 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 that and then just wanda being crazy um the bad yeah number one on my list ready ice cream song <laughs> i'm just kidding ice cream song's bad ice cream song yeah like it i feel like just like the, the what i just complained about being stupid like i think it's stupid that people complain about the, that line i think it's also kind of stupid to complain about a song that kids are singing for like 15 seconds but at the same time it's kind of not because it is actually like physically hard to sit through like why did they put that in there? like yeah, doing test do something screenings with the kids but that was a poor decision yeah they could have shown the kids being cute and, cute and not make me want to like turn the movie off um that was bad um what do you think about the, the cgi Bad. Bad, yeah. There's a lot of bad CGI in this movie. The opening scene with America Chavez and Defender Strange, the monster that's chasing them looks terrible. There's a lot of bad CGI in this movie. It's another part of this movie that's, like, bad. There's just a, there's more bad than good in this movie. But the good stuff that is good is great. I think Wanda Storm and Kamartage is fucking awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. 
Yeah, 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 I like that. I like that too. But I, you know this, and you, you're you lower on it than me. I just love WandaVision. I adore WandaVision. It's one of my favorite MCU projects. It's easily in my top 10 MCU projects. Even though WandaVision isn't without its problems. WandaVision has problems. But to go to say, WandaVision is setting up her character for Multiverse of Madness. And then to, to go from point... WandaVision takes you from point A to B and the off-screen development for Wanda that we don't see from WandaVision to mom is B to Z. Kinda. And it just, it's too fast, it's too quick, it bothers the hell out of me. I can see what you're saying. Um, One other problem I have with this movie is in Multiverse of Madness, it is a Doctor Strange movie, but he gets his butt handed to him the entire movie. Mm -hmm. Like, Wanda wrecks Doctor Strange in his own movie. Mm Mm-hmm. And I know this is, like, a big thing to me. Like, when I see a superhero movie, I want the superhero to do cool, awesome stuff. Doctor Strange doesn't, really. He doesn't even beat her at the end. She kind of beats herself. And America Chavez punches her in the face. Yeah, and he's just kind of, like, running away from her the whole movie. And it's mm-hmm. like, you are you were Sorcerer Supreme. Like, you took on Thanos. And it's cool to see how epic Wanda is, but I would have liked to see how epic Doctor Strange is, too, in his own movie. Yeah, the only epic scene that Doctor Strange gets is the the music fight. Which I really like. Which is awesome. It's my favorite scene Super in the movie. Super creative. It's, it's up there. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. one of my favorite scenes in the movie. It's awesome. But, yeah. Also, yeah. Rachel McAdams. My queen. My queen. Favorite working actress till the day I die. Next. Oh, yeah. This is a controversial one. Wakanda Forever? No? No. What's, what's next? Love and Thunder? Thor 4. Four, Love and Thunder, re-review, three, two, one. Six. Four out of ten, yeah. Oof. It's not the worst thing in the world, and I do not think it's the worst MCU project. But it's real bad. It's real I, bad. I don't think I have much more to say about this, because I've talked about it a lot. You've talked about it a lot. I, let me tell you, this was the first movie where I thought Disney has gone too far with the volume. And since then, I feel like I've just continued to be proven right. You know what the volume is? No? Yeah, it's like how loud a movie is. <laughs> the volume was is this big dome set that was developed for oh, Mandalorian. Oh, yeah, Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. And it's instead of being a green screen, they're in an environment that looks like what the CGI will look like eventually. And that's great and dandy for the actors so that they can be acting good and not be opposite of blue screen like they are in the Star Wars prequels, which is why you get very wooden performances from everybody in that movie. Like Hayden. Exactly. You said it, not me. Um, You said it. Um, (laughs) But the volume is small. And this movie was the first movie where I was like, stop it before this gets worse. And then it only gets worse in future projects. The opening scene with gore where he's walking around the desert. There's a sandstorm going around him, and he's walking, and he's walking, and he's walking. You get no sense of scale. There's no panning out that this is this huge, empty, barren desert. It's literally an area as big as our set, is what he's walking around. And then he goes to the jungle with the god and this and that, and it's an area as big as this set. And it's to say that it's Kenobi. You know the the the, the when chase, Leia yeah. is running around running from the bounty hunters yeah. and then they get hit by a tree it's because they don't have space to film something elaborate so that's why they had to By the way side note I think that is the worst singular worst scene in all of Star Wars It's the volume's fault Is that that scene is the volume's fault I don't disagree I I disagree with you I don't think that's the worst scene in Star Wars but it's a bad scene it's the volume's fault so this was the first movie and I think constantly in this movie they are limited by the volume Yeah and and I was like oh this is this is tough that's, I think that's an issue I have with this movie that nobody else talks about I have the issues that everybody else has Yeah the every- screaming goats are so annoying the humor is so annoying it's so much it's yeah, so everyone knows the problems with this movie. Yeah. And I probably agree with it to a certain extent. Um, I will say, like, how I felt in Ragnarok yeah. is why I, I like I, I dislike it. Everyone knows my opinion on that. Yeah. Um, I just didn't have that feeling as much and or as often in Love and Thunder. One time that I did was when they're in, like, that town hall and, like, Thor is supposed to be, like, teleported. And he's, like, teleported outside and, like, falls into the towers. It was just, like... That that comedy right there is just like I remember that I I definitely laughed at that. 
that was like one of the moments where I was like, that's just not funny. Yeah. Um, Screaming ghosts don't bother me as much. I like the, the things that I do like in this movie. I think Christian Bale was good as the villain. I think the whole shadow realm fight scene was awesome. super awesome. Awesome. Um, and then, then I, I hate that they killed Jane. I will say that's one of my positives for the movie. Not necessarily that they kill her, but I love that they gave her cancer. I really didn't think that, that they were going to have the balls to do that because that's the story. In yeah, the I love comics. it when people get cancer too. Yeah. And I just definitely didn't. I was the, you know, Marvel changes a lot of shit and kind of the shit that they change is shit like that. Like, oh, we can't give her cancer. Like, let's just make her sick. But no, she was like in chemo. And the only, that was awesome. The only reason I don't like it is because Thor has lost literally every single other person. We've seen him lose his mom. We've seen him lose his dad. We've seen him lose Loki. We've seen him lose all of Asgard. Let him have the girl. <laughs> like, like the, he gets love at the end, the, the the daughter. What is that? But, like, I just, I was like. But then here's my response to that. I have no problem that they killed her. What I do have a problem with is seeing her and Heimdall and Valhalla at the end. She doesn't deserve to be there? No, I, I have no problem with her being there. Oh, so we're just going to bring him fucking back. No, and don't. her death is going to be for nothing. No, we don't know that. Well, then why would they show it? But how is, like, they haven't brought Heimdall back. Yeah, but they totally might because of that. I just, nah. I, that annoyed me. What, they're going to make a Thor 5 and bring Jane back? No. They are making Thor 5. I don't think they're going to do that, though. Next. Last one? Yes. No. Yes. yes. Yeah. BPWF. Wakanda forever, baby. Here's our review for Black Panther, Wakanda forever. Three, two, one. Eight. Five out of ten. Wow, you're really high on this movie. You're really low. Do you think it's better or worse than the first one? I think it's about the same. I'd probably give the first one like an 8.5. I think it's clearly worse. I do think it's impressive how good this movie is considering the hand that they were dealt. Yes. The script was written when Chadwick Boseman passed. Yeah, like... Like, that's impossible to deal with that. Um, so, it's impressive, but my main issue with the movie remains. I don't think Black Panther's a particularly good movie. But, one of the highlights of Black Panther for me is there are some great side characters. Like Shuri. Mm -hmm. Michael B. Jordan as the villain, Killmonger, is spectacular. Mm -hmm. I think... Claw. Claw is spectacular. I think M'Baku is fabulous. He's good in this one too, though. He's good in this one. You but, bald-headed demon. But in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, the whole time I was thinking, there's a reason these are side characters. You can't make any of these characters main characters. They are good side characters. And that's just my main issue with this movie, is this would be an Ant-Man movie. With, like, just Luis and T.I. and Dasta Malshan and, like, what is this? It's like, we think we would want that, and we thought we would want a Shuri movie. And it's just, these aren't main characters. They don't... I also don't like that. Every Black Panther arc is the same arc. He goes through the same arc in Civil War that he goes through in Black Panther that she goes through in Wakanda Forever. Which is? Revenge is bad. He goes through that in Black Panther? Yeah, so that's the arc in Civil War. Yeah, that's obvious. And then in the thing where it's they killed his dad for not... And they shouldn't have killed his dad, and then they shouldn't have left the kid. Yeah, but that's that's Killmonger's arc, not T'Challa's. That's T'Challa because he's screaming to his dad at the end. He's like, you were wrong! Mm. And then that's the same arc she deals with in this movie. Also, think it's, it was wrong to kill Ramonda. It was wrong to kill the queen. Why? Because they are like... Should have given her cancer? Sure. <laughs> It's like, there's enough emotional, like they needed the, 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 the narrative reason for killing Ramonda is she needed to have something to be angry about, to learn the revenge thing. Chadwick is dead. You do not, she does not need to lose Black Panther, her brother. Yeah, but no one killed him. You coulda. 
Yeah, but I, I... And even then, you want to keep the illness, you want to keep it as vague as fucking possible, make Namor's people responsible for the illness. I, like, I think they handled Ramonda's death really well, and I think the very first scene in Black Panther Wakanda Forever where it's like a black screen yeah. and you just hear... I'm getting chills right now. You just hear like Shuri's voice and mm-hmm. she's freaking out. Mm-hmm. And it's just like a one shot following her around the lab trying to save her brother mm-hmm. and then it just cuts. Mm-hmm. I, I have never been more sucked into a Marvel movie in the first two minutes. Unfortunately, there's I, two, hour, two hours after that moment. Yeah, but I think... Because I like that scene too. Yeah, but... And I, that's the way to do it the most respectful. But then... And you know my opinion on this. Yeah, this is stupid. I think that's the most disrespectful thing they've ever done. Giving him For a child. Context, giving him a child, naming somehow, the child the same thing. Is somehow disrespectful. Very disrespectful. Because it, it wouldn't be disrespectful if you recast him. Because the family was like, you can recast him. I don't think they should do the CGI. I never think the CGI is tasteful. But it, the family gave them, they were like, uh, the Bozeman family said, you can recast him. And they were like, no, it's too soon. That's you recasting him. No, it's not. Giving him a fucking kid with the same name after saying, look at us, we're not going to recast him. That kid's going to be in the Young Avengers movie. Just alongside Speed and Wiccan, Wanda's kids. Yeah, alongside a completely new different character that can carry on his legacy, but that not... That is going to be Black Panther with the same fucking name. Um, it's not disrespectful to give him a kid. It's disrespectful to be like, look at us, we did not recast him. We, it was too soon, and then you recast Such him at the weird, end of the movie. Such a weird thing to complain about. I, I, it, it bothered the hell out. My mouth was agape in the movie. Everyone, that's like everyone's favorite part of the movie, because it was so, it was out of left field, but they did it well. They, that means he was with Nakia. Not, Nakia, right? Nakia. Yeah. And, um, By the way. Yeah, she's great. Couple points up just from her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nakia's great. Nakia's great. Uh, no, obviously I don't have a problem with that, because I'm not crazy. Um. <laughs> well, we'll talk about other good things in this movie. Uh, Namor is really, really great. Namor is great. And El Nino Sin Amor is the coolest thing the MCU has ever done. Freaking Okoye rocking those people on that bridge is sick. Yes. She takes on those people by her. Like, there's a moment where, like, they come out and it's like a like 3v1 or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And Okoye just goes, woo, woo. and, like, I was with Dre and I went, Oh, <laughs> and we like yeah. buckled up for this fight and she just like, she killed them, but then they came back. It was really yeah. cool. No, there's some cool stuff. Uh, I think my least favorite thing, this is also a weird thing to complain about, but it's just so bad. Um, the Ironheart suit is just bad. It's so bad. Like it looks cool, but like it no, also it doesn't, doesn't look real. Like No, it doesn't. It's, it's just. It, yeah, you're right. I don't really complain about suits. I think people who are like, this suit's so cool or this poster like talk about stuff visually like that or weird but like it just didn't look like it was really there and I, I don't know it just kind of took me out of it um, the anytime. CGI looks really bad it's an ugly design for a suit yep absolutely I couldn't agree more that's a good take but yeah good good end credit scene <laughs> that's the kid one yeah and then is there another one I'm sure there is I don't even remember I think it was Shuri being funny or something I don't know I hope it's not something funny but no, I, th- I think it's a good movie. It's a good, solid movie. I remember that was like, actually, this is a funny story that we can tell to end this off. Um, I called you right after I saw it. Mm-hmm. This is the first time we had known each other well enough to talk after a Marvel a movie. A Marvel movie. And I called you and I was like, we just got out of Wakanda forever. And you're like, oh my gosh. I was like, oh, great. And I was like, oh my gosh, how bad was that? And, and you were like, like, what? I loved it. And I was like, what? And we were screaming at each other for 20 minutes. Yeah. And that was before we had even thought about doing the podcast. But like looking back on it, it was like, oh, we probably should have been like, oh, this is going to work. You were literally like, that's like one of the worst movies ever. And I was like. Yeah, I was a little hyperbolic. Yeah, you, yeah you, you were like super like. Yeah, I thought it was over really the bad. top when you first. It started. is bad. I have sweetened on it a little bit. I still think it's worse than the first one. Yeah, I probably do too. But like, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. Um, okay, so my, my phase four rankings go, obviously, No Way Home, Shang-Chi at the top two. Then uh-huh. we're going Wakanda Forever, Eternals, Black Widow, Love and Thunder. But if you noticed, the top three... Oh, I, you have Black Widow that low. 
I mean, here's the thing. No Way Home's a 9.5. Shang-Chi's a 9. Wakanda Forever is an 8. And then the last four, I all gave 6. Yeah. Uh, Multiverse of Madness, I put above Eternals. So, like, Multiverse of Madness, Eternals, Black Widow, Love and Thunder, I all think are about the same. They're all just 6 out of 10s. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's very similar for me. I just think they're all 5 out of 10s. Because I gave Wakanda Forever, Multiverse of Madness, and Shang-Chi all 5 out of 10s. Then I've got Thor 4 out of 4 out of 10, and Eternals out of 6 out of 10. Black Widow has 6 out of 10. But everything other than No Way Home for me is all... Give it a fine, give it. which is No Way Home at one, then Eternals, then Black Widow, then Shang Chi, then Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, then Multiverse of Madness, and then Thor four. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I could rearrange the bottom four and be fine. Yeah, I definitely have Eternals second place though. I like Eternals. I could probably put Eternals above Mom. Oh, you, you have Mom at, ahead of Eternal? I have Mom at four. I think the Eternal's twist with Icarus, I think, is really compelling. Yeah, I'll swap those two. The way that he kills uh, Salma Hayek, I think, is really, really interesting. I'll swap those two. Your favorite working actress, Salma Hayek. Yeah. <clears throat> Patreon. Gemma Chan. And speaking of, we will end this episode off with a message to y'all. We have ranked uh, all the of TV the shows. TV shows. Yeah. Uh, that is on the Patreon. A separate yeah. episode that will be out... All patrons will get that, not just the- All patrons will get that. So, if you're not signed up for the Patreon, but you want to see us argue about... Thanks to Cassidy. The Falcon Winter Soldier, or Loki, WandaVision. or WandaVision, if- or... She-Hulk. Moon Knight. Yeah. That Garbaggio. Okay. Yeah, or well- the worst MCU project of all time, Secret Invasion. Okay.